We're destined for greatness. Nobody ever thought we would make it. Watch how far we take it. Past the stars and spaceships from a city where the music is sacred. Five oh two. You in the presence of a rebel now. Yeah, we about to take it to another level now. About time everybody got together now. Things are looking better now. We can live forever. Good morning, Marshall Film. My name is Taylor. My name is Jesus. And we are seventh graders here at Thurgood Marshall. And we'd like to welcome you to another edition of the AM Morning Show. And now for our mission. Our mission is to unlock students' potential by working together and to create an atmosphere of academic excellence and a culture of support, belonging, and growth. Our vision is to prepare all students to academically, social, emotionally ready to thrive and attend their future goals. And now, please pause for a moment of silence. Now, please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's begin. I pledge of allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, of liberty and justice, and justice for all. Now, Kicking it to you, Mr. Gilts. Do that one more time. Right, and now kicking it. Mr. Gilts in five, four, mm -hmm. kick it for real. Two, one. Kicking it to you, you Mr. Mr. Gilts. Well, welcome back, Thurgood Marshall. I'm Mr. Gilks, principal of Thurgood Marshall here, and I have your announcements for this week. It's going to be a busy week in sports. Uh, this week in basketball action, we have a home game this Monday against Oliver. We have an away game tomorrow versus JFK, and we also have a home game this Thursday versus Wright. So students coming out and support our teams. Our teams are doing great. Uh, both teams were victorious this past week and our boys team uh, really, really yeah. is picking up in strength. So come on out. Uh, Oliver and JFK are both our rivals and we need uh, you to be there. Uh, so scan that QR code and come out and join us uh, for those basketball games. And then just a reminder today, students, you'll report, hopefully you're in it right now, your third blocks for testing. That's for sixth through eighth grade. If you are a fifth grader, you should be in your homeroom as typical, and you're gonna be taking the science benchmark assessment. And then tomorrow, fifth grade, you're done with testing unless you have makeups to do. It'll just be uh, your field trip tomorrow. And then uh, tomorrow, all students in sixth through eighth grade report to their fourth block for testing and uh, you'll finish up your final test. Yeah. And then next week, it's gonna only be a two and a half day week. Uh, we're going to end the week on Wednesday, December the 20th. So students, just a reminder, please make sure if you are a car rider to let your parents know, uh, let your parents know to pick you up at 1225. That's when we will conclude. And if you're a bus rider, the buses will be here. And so there will be no fun company or mariner care afterwards. So please check with your parents, make sure you work out arrangements for transportation. Just a reminder again, the offer is still good. We're gonna have some incentives uh, for students that score on track or exceeding uh, expectations on math and ELA. Yeah. Also, if you're a student that scored below in math and ELA and you bring them up to approaching, there's also going to be incentive for you. We're going to have a uh, cookie and hot cocoa bar when you come back in January once we get those cut scores. Uh, also, for the grade level with the highest overall benchmark scores, we're going to uh, have some ice cream or some type of special treat. I believe sixth and seventh grade were the recipients of that, and we pass that out during your lunch. So, students, no matter what test you're taking, uh, take your time and do your best. Uh, help your overall team be victorious and uh, do it for yourself too. Uh, again, we're always preparing for greatness, so we want to always prepare like the real thing and always give our full attention, time, and effort on every assessment that we take.
sua vez Welcome back, Mariners. It's Miss Long, your trusted librarian, back with another edition of the Library Check-In. Guess what? Seven more, only seven more wake-ups until winter break. I'm excited. I know you are, so let's just get into it. I'm going to spend this check-in celebrating some awesome readers in our building. So check out the following folks who got caught reading. Are you reading in the building? Maybe you'll get caught next and earn a pretty sweet treat. And let's give a huge congratulations to the top 10 readers on Beanstack for the past month. So Ryan, Tasmin, Aijin, Joy, Mila, Tylan, Trinity, Charity, Gemma, Elise, and Sophia, be sure to come by and get your prize from the library. That's a wrap. Happy reading. Hey, third grade Marshall students. What's going on, everybody? We, we are, are here, here to talk about our December incentive. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so for December, you guys are going to have an opportunity to win lunch on us. So one student from each grade level will be picked randomly to win lunch on us. So let's talk about how that's going to work. You're going to have to have at least 300 live school points. So any student that has at least 300 live school points will be entered into a drawing. And with that drawing, if you win, then you win lunch from a local restaurant on us. And we'll get we'll get back to you guys with some more information on which restaurant we're going to choose. So next week, we'll come back on to do another AM for you guys to do the raffle to see who are our four winners. And those winners, you will have lunch the last week of December before we go on winter break. But don't fret, if you do not win this incentive, we are having our movie incentive in January, so stay tuned for more details on that. Remember, be good, get those live school points, do the right thing, be a leader, show good qualities, and you'll be able to participate in our incentives. See you soon. Santa's watching. <laughs>
that's me, over 20 years ago, when I was 10 years old. I had a fourth grade teacher I admired more than I could even comprehend. I wrote mountains of silly books that sat in my closet, until it was time to start preparing for it. The test. The standardized test. The thing that would define us. Nothing mattered but this test. We were told how important it was. We were offered rewards for doing well, and prepared for it like it was some sort of triathlon. And so, bubble after bubble, question after question, passage after passage, I poured myself into that test, barely understanding what I was reading or why. And when the scores came back, I saw the disappointment on my teacher's face, the sadness in my parents' eyes. 40%. I was a 40. While my friends were 80s or 90s or 95s, I was a 40. So I wrote about that test. Angry, upset, frustrating things we couldn't say in school because we had to stay positive. I started practicing my reading comprehension. I turned the page on my reading problems and started reading fun books, asking for extra help from my teachers. But I never forgot the fact that I was a 40. Because I had let that test, that giant monster of questions and bubbles and passages and facts, define me. But now, 23 years later, I have two college degrees. I've written and published five books. I've been teaching kids for over 10 years. I teach them how to excel at reading comprehension, and I dare you to find a time when I am alone without a book in my hand to read. I devour books. I am not a 40. I am a thousand things, but not a 40. Because at some point, after that annoying little test, I picked myself up, and I realized that test did not define me. That test was not the giant monster everyone painted it to be. It was a puzzle challenge, just some words and fill in bubbles, a minor setback. But it was not a definition of who I was or who I ever will be. Listen to me third graders, fourth graders, students of all ages, elementary, middle or high, this test does not define you. Don't let them scare you. Don't think for a minute that this is about how well you do compared to other kids in your class or on your street. Don't think for a minute that this test is about you at all, because it's not. It's about seeing how your teachers are teaching, and how they can improve. It's about seeing how your school leaders are leading, and how they can do better. This test doesn't tell you how bright you are, or how creative, amazing, inspiring, or talented you are, or ever will be. This test does not define you. And if you think it does, you're not alone. There are thousands of kids feeling exactly what you feel, right now, about this test, worrying about a little old test, instead of enjoying being a kid. This test does not define you. No matter how hard you think it does, no matter what grown-ups say, there is no permanent record. There is no employer who will ask about your third grade standardized test scores, or the results of your middle school exams, or your 10th grade end of course score report. This test does not define you, and it never will. This test is about helping teachers improve. And you know what? Your teacher is amazing. I mean it. Your teacher is a nurse, a social worker, a therapist, an artist, an ally, a coach, a police officer, an instructor, and a miracle worker. No matter what score you or your classmates get, your teacher will continue to be amazing. Why? test scores don't define her. Your test scores don't define him. Your test scores don't define anybody. And given the chance to define yourself on your own with no adults nearby, pen and paper in hand, just you, yourself, and nobody but yourself, given the chance to define yourself, you would never, will never say three or pass or 40 or any other meaningless score, phrase, or level that some test assigns you. Given the chance to define yourself, you wouldn't even bring up the word test, because this test does not define you. You define you. So go now. Go out there. Go out there and write what you really think about this test. 
write about your fears, your emotions, your new realization that this test does not define you. Get it all out, scream about it, make a poem about it, turn it into a video and put it on YouTube. Then write about what really matters in life. Write about what matters to you, what you're grateful for, what you pour your heart into. Go, go now. Go out there and read what you love to read. Go out there and ask a million questions about the things that fascinate you. Don't limit yourself to an A, B, C, or D choice. You are not a three, a pass, a 90, or a 40. You are E, none of the above. Go, go now. Go laugh at this test, this little challenge, this puzzle, as just one more thing in life that you will pour your heart into, but will never define you. No matter how high you fly or how hard you fall, go now. Go, define yourself. And now it's time for our quote of the week. Our quote of the week is from Mike Farrell. The quote is, if you try and do your best, there is no failure. If you try and do your best, there is no failure. So students this week, as you finish out your benchmark assessments and as we get prepared to finish out this quarter, let's all give our best. If we're all giving our best, there is no failure. Students, let's have a fantastic week together as we all prepare for greatness.